Hey guys, D-Mike here for another episode of Super Nintendo Sundays. We're back with some more Mega Man X. Let's check out who our baddie is today. It's going to be Launch Octopus. If I saw a nearly 8-foot octopus, I would probably pee myself. I don't know how big octopi octopuses are, but... I imagine an 8-foot one, especially that looks like that, would be pretty intimidating. So, uh, no thanks. But anyway... Let's get started with the day's first boss. That's right, there will be two. Launch Octopus is interesting. I would say in the grand scheme of all the stages and bosses, in my opinion, I would say Launch Octopus is one of the hardest ones. Part of the reason for that, going back to referring to the stage itself, is that this stage has four mini bosses. I guess it's it's kind of like two times two, realistically. They're not four different ones. And there's a life that we're never going to get. That's the life of a Let's Player. But anyway, so... There's... This is one of them. I don't know what any of these bosses are named, so I apologize, but... Uh, there's this big old fish who... He sucks. He really sucks. And he'll shoot harpoons at you. He has a little shining laser that he can use to try to do damage. Thankfully, I'm able to dodge some of those harpoons. Just... Man, but there is a life. The game throws some pity on me, which is actually really nice because this stage is brutal at some points. It has a lot of spikes. It has underwater physics, which if you've ever played one of the NES Mega Mans, you'll understand what that means. Your jumps are a little floaty. You can jump a lot higher, which is good and bad. It's cool because it can help get you out of danger, but also part of the problem when you're dealing with that is that it's hard to know where the ground is. So if you're not careful, you will potentially come down after a successful jump and land unsuccessfully on spikes. So we fight this fish again. I have no idea why they thought that this was fun. This one's a little more precarious. You can see that there's spikes right there. And it's a pain in the butt. This has actually ended a few recordings in the past for me just because of killing the fish, coming down awkwardly, and then landing on those spikes. So try not to, if you can. So we got some whirlpools here. I'm assuming that's not really what those are. I don't exactly know what you would call this. It's like forced water spouts. I have no idea. But we're going to climb up onto this whale shaped ship here. It's all ship shaped. There's a lot of things in this level that are that seem kind of arbitrary. And you're like, why is this here? Also, I had complaints about Link's Awakening and, you know, if you've ever played Breath of the Wild frame rate issues. Uh, whew, this level struggles mightily when it's with frame rate, especially right here. But then again, you know, we're talking about a 16-bit game that was made, you know, almost 30 years ago. So, you know, it gets a pass. Modern hardware shouldn't really have that much of a problem with modern software, you'd think. But here it is. So here's mini boss number three, or number two, if you want to think about in terms of originality. This is the second original mini boss in the game. I'm not entirely sure what it is, but it kind of reminds me of that underwater snake thing from Metroid Fusion that you have to fight at one point. It's not quite as aggressive as that, thankfully. Kind of looks a little bit like a Gyarados. Um, very close to dying right there. That was very, very scary. Full clench. But yeah, his only weak spots are his head and his tail. I really love the animation of this, though. I think that they did a really nice job with kind of making you feel like you're fighting a huge sea snake underwater, like a... I'm not entirely sure, like a legendary creature. But you can get on the back of his head and blow him up. But you have to be very careful, once again, like I said, because you're not sure all the time where the ground is. You can kind of use those pillars as an indicator, but it's tough. So that's one of the few heart tanks. I don't know what that's... That's what those are called. Heart life increases, whatever you want to call them that you can get without any sort of additional weaponry. So the game throws you a bone on this one because they know like the, they're like, the level is hard, and if you know how to get down to that spot and fight the, the sea snake, then get yourself a hard increase. It's very useful, very nice. And if you haven't had enough of said sea snake, you get another shot at it. If you don't take out the whale ship and then go underground to fight it, this is your first natural occurrence of it. Kind of feels like the the Donkey Kong Country boss approach of, hey, if you haven't had enough fun with it the first time, maybe you'll enjoy it the second or third time. How about that? 
So you should kind of have an idea, if you fought it the first time, what to do. Right on its back, shoot it in the head. That's kind of fun and kind of like... Silly to think of, like, there's this giant creature that you're just riding on its back and just blowing out its brains. It's kind of fun to do. It's dispatched the same exact way. Shoot its head, shoot its tail. Body is invincible. Nothing you can do about it. But the frame rate, once again, is going to start chugging. I'm assuming that this sprite in particular is very involved and very complicated with how they programmed it, so it probably did take quite a bit of juice from the Super Nintendo to be able to run properly. But you blow them up. There you go. Problem solved. Get yourself a health refill and there you go. Not too bad. Not too bad. These guys really suck. Take them out. That's it. So this stage isn't tedious if you just brute force it and just go right through, but the two fish mini bosses early on, especially the second one with the spikes, is really frustrating. Especially if you just lose track of where you are spatially. You just gotta be very careful with that. And here's Launch Octopus. He's definitely one of the harder bosses in the game, I would say, of the eight. His patterns aren't necessarily super tough, but he does have projectiles that he shoots at you, those missiles and fish. When he gets into his own little cyclone there, he's invincible. So come in here, bring yourself the rolling shield that we got from Armored Armadillo. It's his weakness. I like to kind of bounce back and forth with the X-Buster and with the Rolling Shield because in this game, you only get one full bar of special power. So if you run out of that after your first run through and you don't beat the boss, well, that's uh, too bad. Sorry, you're out of luck. And you're locked into the boss room, so you don't really have the ability to go in and out. You'll have to essentially go through and redo the whole stage. So that's a pain in the butt. So use your rolling shield sparingly if you can, if you feel like you're going to to croak before you'll be able to take him out efficiently, then you know maybe it's time to go for another run through before you burn through your special. So those uh, those missiles are pretty uh, pretty daunting, pretty effective, but we just get through by the skin of our teeth. I was getting to the point of this matchup where I realized that I would have to do a damage race with Launch Octopus because I wasn't doing too well with dodging. And I was running out of rolling shield, so you can see I got there by the slimmest of margins. But that's okay. Sometimes you just gotta do whatever it takes. So we absorb the essence of Launch Octopus. Have some delicious... I don't know what octopus is, like when you eat it. Does it have another name? Like when you eat squid, it's calamari, but I don't know. Beats me. So we're gonna go ahead and switch back to the spec screen and Highlight our next boss, Boomer Kawanger. Of all the bosses in this one, I'm not entirely sure. Like, all of them are pretty clear what animal they are. I think Boomer Kawanger is supposed to be some sort of like a beetle. Like a Hercules beetle or something like that, a Goliath beetle. Based on the way that he looks. But I'm not entirely sure. I also don't know what a Boomer Kawanger is. But here's a Millennial taking on a Boomer. This stage has some of the best music in it, so I'm gonna hush up for a second and let you hear it. One of the few vertical scrollers in the game, I think, besides like the you know final stages of this game, it's might be the only boss that does this, which is pretty neat. Not too difficult of a stage, which is weird because I remember this one always giving me fits when I was a kid. Maybe I was just not very good at this game. That's likely. I mean, I'm not very good at this game now, so multiply that by youth. We've got this little kind of laser section here where we're kind of breaking into this tower. I like to brute force this one. You can kind of try to avoid the lasers if you want, but I just try to speed through it using the, the dash. Most of the enemies in this one are recycled as far as I know. But overall, this stage isn't super tough compared to some of the other ones, and I don't know why I had so much trouble as a kid. But the main takeaway from this stage, once we eventually beat the boss, is that the game opens up a lot. I'll explain what that means once we do accomplish our goal. We have a vertical scroller here in a vertical scrolling level. So that's pretty neat. 
just make sure you don't get crushed by the platform, so just get out of the way. Not too tough. They they telegraph it well enough that you should be able to see what you're doing, so it's not super bad. It's more Pineapple Express. But there is a very... I don't want to say tough, because it's not tough in the sense of, like, this is difficult to do, but it's tough because of the way that my recording setup is, that my controller isn't always as responsive as I'd like it to be, so trying to jump and go up at the same time does not always register, so I wind up having to do this a lot. It can be a little tough and kind of frustrating. Like, right there, I would have jumped onto the, onto the ladder, but I couldn't make it. There it is again. I'm trying to like make these dash jumps where I can pull myself from the vertical platform to the one on the other side, but it's just not happening. I don't know if you're supposed to use the shotgun ice for this part, but it does dispatch the gun and the whatever that is, that bug looking thing in one shot, which is pretty nice. And the shotgun ice is actually something that we'll be using later upon a revisit. So that's something that's gonna actually I'm gonna wind up doing, is that in order to 100% this game, you can't do it the first time around. It's not possible. So you're gonna have to go back and replay some of the stages in order to get yourself all the things you need. Case in point, that life expansion. You're not gonna be able to get that the first time around. You actually need what you get from this boss in this level. So that's kind of strange, a little meta. But it just encourages replayability, I guess. That's actually something I'll take care of probably in a later episode. I mean, I shouldn't say probably, I absolutely will. And I'll be doing that with pretty much every stage that has anything that we missed. Some of the stages don't. You'll have some that have collect collectible things, like refills and tanks, etc., that we can only get the second time around, and so we'll just do a revisit. And that'll probably be near the end when we're getting ready to wrap up this uh, wrap up this series, which we're getting pretty close to already. This is the third episode, and after these bosses are done, we have three left. So what that's going to mean is we'll have one boss by itself, and then I'll probably go and do the the recap, collect all the things that I missed before we get ready for the final stages, which will probably be their own video just to make things concise. Put a bow on it, nice and pretty. That's how I like it. So here we are. We're already at the final boss. This is Boomer Quanger. I think that's how you say that. Kowanger, Quanger. He is a really cool sprite. Kind of almost looks like a Power Ranger. But I was not long for this first attempt at this fight, unfortunately. Going into a fight where you have like less than half of your health, it's potentially ideal just to sacrifice one of your lives if you can, if you have it and then start fresh. It's tough sometimes to fight a boss if you're half health. The likelihood of you winning is probably pretty low, so just be mindful of that. But we do have an ace up our sleeve. Boomer Quanger is super, super weak to the homing torpedo. So unlike Launch Octopus, there actually are iframes here. Launch Octopus doesn't have any when you fight Using the rolling shield, for whatever reason, the game is like, nah, we're not gonna help you out. So already one of the hardest bosses doesn't have iframes. That's why Launch Octopus is really tough, but Boomer Quanger does. He's very weak to the homing torpedo. And look, I didn't even need, you know, like what, like a third of it? That's not bad. That's two bosses down. We got three left and Boomer Quanger's special weapon. The boomerang cutter is going to be super useful in getting all of those odds and ends items that we will need to 100% the game. So that's it, everybody. That's the episode. Two bosses down, two of the harder bosses in the game. Wrapped up. We'll come back next time. Fight some more. Thanks for watching, everybody. I've been D-Mike, and this has been Super Nintendo Sundays. I'll see you next time. Bye.